So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. today I guess we'll start um, a new topic in, in the course, which is about integrals. Uh, probably the exam grades, I think it would be like last time, you should get them around Tuesday of next week. Uh, but they're definitely better than last time, which I suppose uh, is hopefully what you felt as well. So. Um, the topic for today is then about integrals. So maybe um, you remember this from Cal 1, but if you had like an interval from uh, AV, right, uh, then the definite integral from A to B of a function f of x dx, right? That could be interpreted as like, like the net area between the curve and the x axis, right? So this is, So for example, um, net area in the sense that, you know, the stuff above the X axis contributes positively. So this would be positive area. And the stuff below the Y axis um, would contribute, contribute negatively. And so this would be negative. And like the integral uh, like takes care of, of that automatically. So like, you know, like if they're not, uh, <laughs> well, it is an interpretation, right? But yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's like a useful convention because otherwise you can always work with the absolute value of the function to get like the true area. So, um, So it would be like this, the green stuff minus purple stuff, basically. So the that's what we, you did uh, in COG 1. And like maybe it shouldn't come as a surprise that now what we are going to do is the same, but for functions of two variables. And uh, eventually three variables. But for now, uh, let's keep it to two variables. So now if you think of like maybe some region, like before we had like an interval, right? On the, on the plane. So before it was like, sorry, we had like an interval on the X axis. Now, instead of an interval, we're going to have like a region on the X, Y plane. Imagine that you have like some region here R, right? And then um, you have the graph of the function. I, which you can think again, like some sort of surface or membrane floating in space. So there's, um, if you think about this,
I, I will show you like an animation with GeoGebra in a second, but I don't know if it's kind of clear what I'm trying to um, do here. Like, yes, can you scroll up a little bit, please? Scroll up. You mean, uh, is that what you were asking? Yes, please. Thank you. Uh, so now, what's going to happen um, instead of like looking for area, right? Like we're sort of trying to look like for the volume between the graph and like um, the region on the X, Y plane. So now we're going to have something like this. And I'll explain in a second what all these things mean. But like, this notation will refer, like, will be saying something like the net volume. And the region R on the XY plane. So um, let's see, like, let me show you uh, an animation about this. Maybe this will help uh, to clarify some things. So Okay, so can everyone see the, the, the this GeoGebra stuff? So you have like this surface, which is in red, right? Um, ignore this like cube for a second or this box. So you have this surface in red and then you have like some region on the X, Y plane, which in this case is sort of like a rectangle, right? So think of like um, the stuff between the rectangle, like the, the part of the, of the surface that sits right on top of, right above the rectangle, okay? And there will be some volume between the two, right? And so like if uh, maybe this will make it more clear, um, do, do you see it? Like all this green stuff, would be like sort of like the volume between the surface and the the, the volume of the part of the, the between the surface and the region on the X Y plane. Is that making sense? This this uh, just kind of like the space between the surface and the plane. Uh, right, uh, but uh, not necessarily all of the plane, right? Not like necessarily all the- Just, just whatever the input region is. Correct, yeah. Uh, if you wanted to do like all of the plane, that's like, it would be similar, you know, to like this improper integrals that you saw in Calc 1 or Calc 2. Was it Calc 2, maybe? Calc, Calc 2. Yeah, yeah like, like, you know, like this from negative infinity to infinity. Like mm -hmm. if, if you wanted to do like the entire plane, you can, but it would be called also like an improper integral yeah so like the idea is like someone decides a region on the plane for you like that's not something that you decide right so in this case i decided it to be like the this rectangle it eventually it won't be a rectangle necessarily that's what uh, where this will get fun instead of a rectangle it might be like a triangle 
or it would be like a disc or it would be like a, a star like even a spongebob like picture it could be uh yeah this is uh right like this looks very 3d printer 3d printing like yeah that's a good point so uh yeah also and it's kind of fun so when you uh and so it would be some region on the xy plane and then there would be some like volume between that part of the xy plane and the surface right uh again with the caveat like you or like a, just keeping in mind if that if the surface go like sort of uh dives below the xy plane then that part of the volume counts as being negative right so um, now there's like, I don't know if, again, like you remember this thing called like Riemann sums, uh, uh, the idea, um, which is sort of like one of the, one of those things that you are told is similar to this epsilon delta definition, like you're told, but you don't really use that much. Yeah. So we won't also use them that much, but like if, like, really we won't use them at all, but like the point is like if, uh, no, we're not using them, but uh, just to bring it up uh, to mention it, like the idea is like if you were really interested in defining the, this volume, mathematically speaking, like what you would think is like, well, you do know how to compute the volumes of boxes, right? Like which are like this box, like you see these four boxes here, like this um, prisms or whatever, you know, the volume of a box, right? Like that's just the area times the height. So like you would think that, that this, four vol like here like the, you just have like four boxes or prisms uh, and like they sort of approximate the, the the real volume right to some extent but as you make the subdivision better and better right which is what you see here right you start getting more towers or boxes and so this vo new volume is a better approximation right and so in the limit right uh, in the limit when you had made like like it's like a like cooking contest, right? Like when you have to slice things super thin, like when you have like slice everything like really, really thin, like very super thin um, boxes, then there's like, there won't be any distinction between the real volume and the, and this approximation. So in the limit, this should give you like the, the, the value of the double integral. And that's really how you would think of it being defined as a limit of um, of a sum of approximate volumes it's like uh, uh yeah it would be called like um you can call it like a 3d riemann sum uh people usually just keep calling them riemann sums uh, if you want to give them a name because like this uh, idea just like can be a uh, use regardless of like the number of dimensions but yeah uh, but is that making sense? So it's just, I'm just saying like secretly, if you really wanted to define this volume, how it's computed, you could like just approximate it this way. Like you might see like one or two problems on my lab, which are about that, about doing that, but that's just for you to get some of your hands dirty. It's not that really we're going to use this method. It's just like for anything in the course, it's just for you to know that it is, that's actually how you can approximate the volumes or, or like and compute them in practice, right? Um, so the addition of kind of like the negative and positive areas here, it would be parallel to just the volumes, right? And whatever, say if this, whatever surface extended down below the right. uh, X plane, then we would have like a negative volume and then we would find right. some of that. In fact, let me see if I can do that uh, on our friend, uh, yeah, Debra. So, um, let's see, uh, let me share this. Okay, now I'm sharing GeoGebra with you. Let's see if I can make some points here. Okay. Can everyone see the rectangle? Yeah. So imagine that that's like the region that I choose on the XY plane. Again, it doesn't have to be a rectangle. You like this could also work. I mean, it can be something like let's keep it like more irregular so like that people don't think that we necessarily need to be working with like rectangles. Um, 
So imagine that you have something like this, and then I have like z equals x squared plus y squared, right? Again, like you could imagine like uh, looking at the, uh, I mean, this is like a, a little bit uh, big of a rectangle, but like imagine like just looking at the volume between part of the, of this region and, and the, and the surface, okay? So just like, it's like as if you were built like lift, like you construct some vertical walls along on top of each edge, right? And that will give you like some container and then you're finding the volume of that container. Now, if you actually were to move this, this paraboloid a little bit down the, the XY plane, uh, now you see like now some part dipped below the XY plane, right? Which is here. So this like now there's like uh, this region that's trapped below the XY plane. Now this is like that volume would come as negative and the, the stuff that's still like above the XY plane will give you uh, a positive volume. Is, is that making sense? Now, uh, um, here's the cool thing. Uh, when, uh, let me stop sharing. Uh, I mean, let me go back to the Firefox. When you go, um, when you were approximating, when you are approximating this like volume, right? With the, the boxes, right? like. If you think about it, one property of a box, right? If you take a box like this, one of these four pieces, like both X and Y change, right? If you're moving, like imagine walking on, on a box, when you're walking on, on this like uh, bottom side, then like both, uh, you can change both your X and Y coordinates, okay? Uh, so the meaning of that is that somehow you're sort of working with the two variables at the same time, right? because you're approximating with boxes where both X and Y change. Uh, the cool thing is that you could actually think of computing this volume by just changing one of the variables at a time. So this is what I'm about to illustrate to you. And this is like in practice, how you compute the double this integral, this volume. Uh, yeah, so we're going to do like a partial integral. Although again, no one calls them that. Uh, the actual name that people give uh, to those are like iterated integrals, okay? But um, so imagine again, like you're trying to find the volume between this red surface and, uh, and some re rectangle, like it doesn't again necessarily need to be a rectangle, but for now, let's say a rectangle on the XY plane. And so I take, it's like, again, like if you think of this as a piece of bread, a deformed bread, you slice it with a knife, right? Like you take a super tiny, a very thin slice of the bread, which is like this yellow slice, you see? But on this yellow slice, uh, if you think about it, like really you're only moving, like, I don't know in this picture, which is the X axis. Let's say that the, uh, let's, uh, oh, oh, let's see here, Y is changing. So here's Y two. Okay, so right in, the, in this red picture, uh, um, in this picture, the red axis, the X axis is the, the red one. So, so what that means is that, uh, you see like in this yellow slice, only X is changing because um, you have fixed the value of Y to be two. Uh, I don't know if here you, um, if you pay attention here, it says Y equals two, right? Also, people can also see like my point, pointer, right? Uh, my mouse. Yeah. Okay, good. So you see here it says Y equals two. So that means that you have fixed the value of Y to be two. But if I change the value of Y, uh, let me change the value of Y. So if I move it, I decrease it, right? Like now let's say one Y equals one. And so I'm an, in another place of, uh, of, of this picture, right? But so now I have fixed Y to be one again, meaning that uh, in each of these yellow cuts, only X is changing. And so like the idea is like, um, Think of this like image reconstruction. Like this is sort of like an idea that is done in used in medicine, right? Like when they do like brain scanners, you see like a bunch of like slices, like on X-rays or whatever, and then you like you took like a bunch of slices and you can sort of 
put them together to reconstruct like the entire image of the brain, right? So what I'm saying is that as you move the value of y, sort of the yellow slices sweep out the entire volume. Is that making sense? Like just imagine like, it's like a wave, right? Like after you have moved- uh, The yellow square also extends to positive and negative infinity on the x-axis or it's just that? Oh, well, let's say that here, I, I just was interested in- uh, like right like a, actually for this class every, all the examples basically will be bounded all the time so okay. let's say that the I, I wanted like a rectangle where the y values were always between three and negative two with just because that's like what the animation allows me to to play with so like here just started a negative two and I, what i'm saying is like is as, as you sweep out like as you move the these yellow slices you get back the entire volume right um but the good thing is that uh the good thing about doing it this way is that uh you're recovering the volume by only like sort of by uh using like approximations where only one of the variables is changing right and then like you just like um I'll draw the pictures in a second. And then you just like move this approximation to get back everything to uh, to sweep out like the entire volume. Um, but on the other hand, this so this you should think of um, being like you're just like again, you'll be doing like some sort of like partial integrals just because like you can think of first you find like the, um, the area of this yellow slice, right? So that's like an integral, right? Like an integral under of, under the curve was like an area. So this yellow slice is like an area. And then like, as you move the others, like as you move the slice, you're doing like some sort of um, area. So you're summing something else. And that's why you are doing like two integrals in the end. One to find like the area of the yellow stuff. And then the other to sum all these yellow stuff areas. And so, uh, the idea uh, is that like you can do it this way or like notice that I'm about to change the orientation of the size. You can also do it in this other way where now uh, I have fixed like say the value of X. If you see here, like now X is for example two. So when I have fixed the value of X, now only Y is allowed to change, right? But then still, when you do the sweep out, when you start moving these areas, you should like be able to reconstruct the entire 3D shape. So essentially, like what you're saying is like, you can like, again, we're getting close to Halloween. So you can chop like a person this way or this other way. And like, you could still build, 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 build this person back from those pieces, right? So is that, is that making sense? So like you're cutting the person either parallel to the y-axis or very uh, parallel to the x-axis essentially. And then like the pieces together, like you can like, like paste, paste them again. Um, and so like the idea is that the volume can be computed either uh, in two ways. And um, the way which uh, you say that is that it's similar to like uh, that the partial derivative with respect to y and then with respect to x is the same as the partial derivative with respect to x and, we, and then with respect to y. So it's sort of like the same as the hybrid partial derivatives being the same. Like the idea here is like the uh, order in which you, you did like the this area computation will be the same. So let me write all of this on the iPad, be, but like this was sort of like the idea to have in mind of how the picture is supposed to look like. So let me go back to our notes. So, um, so like the idea here is that uh, we can 
usually these cuts or these slices that you draw are only drawn on the XY plane because like, you know, doing the 3D picture would like, this is why we have like GeoGebra. I mean, you don't want to draw that on your, uh, on your page. So like the slices are only shown typically on the XY plane. So let me uh, um, show you the, those things. So. So again, the idea is that, uh, for example, you have like a rectangle. Uh, you have you have like a rectangle from um, x is go from goes from a to b and y goes from c to d, and again like imagine that above this rectangle is this membrane or surface that I showed you, and so uh, like what I'm saying is that one way to cut this into pieces is like by making like just super thin uh, super thin vertical slices so something like this. Isn't that just a 2D integral? Uh, I mean, uh, the thing is like, I mean, secret, like it, it, it's like a matter of semantics, but it is like, you're just showing like the effect of the, of the cut. Like you're showing like the shadow that the cut made on the XY plane. This is what I'm showing here. Right. It, it, that makes sense. Like we're just looking uh, at the effect of doing this cut, like how the, how does that look on the XY plane? Because again, like okay. drawing the picture in 3D is like too comp like isn't too complicated. So, mm -hmm. uh, but like what I'm trying to say is that imagine that, like imagine that on top of each of these lines sits like one of these yellow cuts or slices that I showed you, right? Uh, th that's what I'm trying to say. So, Professor, yes. do like the double integrals on that formula, would that make like a huge difference or is it just trying to say something? Sorry? With the, the double integral on the formula, uh, what were you saying about the double integral? Um, what, is it just because in the answer there are supposed to be two integrals or is it just there for fancy reason? Oh, no, 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 no. It is that, uh, right, 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 like uh, it, it is, really that you're doing two integrals, correct? Uh, you'll see why in a second. Like, um, the thing is like, um, let me, like, first of all, uh, on this, each of this, on each of these like slices, right? Uh, if you have like here X, right? On each of these uh, segments, only Y is changing, right? On each of these. Yeah. only y is changing, right? And so x is fixed. And so like the idea, like what I'm trying to say is like, for example, uh, if you were to do like um, the integral from say c to d, right? So like, like what, I'm, what I'm trying to say is that you could think of this function like you, you, it's similar to the idea of partial derivatives, right? You think that you made one of the variables like a, like a fake constant, right? So since I fixed X, now like the only true variable is Y, right? And so I can take the integral with respect to Y, right? And that should give me like the area of the yellow slices that I showed you on GeoGebra. Is that making sense? Like, 
So like, because remember like that a single integral is like the area under the curve, right? So what I'm saying is that this should be like the area under um, like of the yellow slices that I showed you on GeoGebra. Is that making sense? Let me just go back to GeoGebra for a second. Uh, uh, sorry, I'll, I'll show you this in a sec. Uh, back in. Right, so here I'm fixing X, right? I fixed the value of X. And so I'm saying like uh, this area, right? This is, I can find like the area of this yellow cut, right? And this is like an area under the curve, right? Which curve, the curve that you got by like, you know, by just looking at the stuff above the part this particular value of X of X, right? And so like what I'm saying is that, um, this piece, right, like this yellow piece can be computed like using like a, a single integral. Is that okay? So this is like a, an area that will depend on X. So let me go back to the iPad. So it's like a, this area, like the answer will end up depending on the value of X that you chose, right? Like that you fixed. So, uh, but then like when you, if you integrate all these areas through uh, by changing the very values of X, then that should give you back the volume, right? So what I'm saying is that the volume should be like the integral of like these areas. So, uh, uh, which is what you get by just varying the value of X between A and B. Is that making sense? Because again, you have to imagine like sweeping, like moving the yellow slices, right? As you move the yellow slice, slices, you get back the volume. This is what you are doing when you do the integral with respect to X. Uh, yeah, I'm about to do an example. Uh, this is saying that, uh, like, what this is saying is that, uh, Let's do like, I mean, let me do it. Uh, let me write it with an example. And uh, then let's do an example first. Uh, I think this will just clarify. Oh yeah, what I'm saying is like what I wrote in below the graph is that uh, X is fixed. It's, it's like being treated here like a constant. So like, let, let, let's just do like an example. Let's say if I gave you uh, this integral So let's do here like an example. Uh, this is kind of like what we did with uh, like the derivatives, Fog and Goff stuff. Yeah, it's like the same idea as the derivatives uh, that you just like- Where this function is a function of another function. Right, 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 right. Okay. Yeah. So let's say that like I had given you this function, like three x y three x y squared minus x, right? And like the region that I gave you was like this rectangle. Um,
then the integral would be in terms of from one to three, but we also would be considering kind of like the inter inner integral from zero to 11. Right? Uh, oh, uh, zero to one, sorry. Uh, this looks, uh, I, okay. uh, yeah, I see why you thought, yeah, I meant one here. Uh, yes, so like what I'm saying is that um, if you wanted to, like what I'm trying to say is that if you wanted to compute this air, air, uh, volume, right? Like this is what like you would write, Sorry, uh, three x y squared minus x dA. What I'm saying is that um, the whole point of like this explanation was that if you wanted to actually do this integral, which is really called like a double integral because like you're going about to integrate twice, like you can think about it this way. You just follow the format that I gave you here. So, um, if you just compare this with like, let's call this like asterisk. And by asterisk, I just mean this. If you compare that, what do we have to put, uh, what bounds do we put uh, at the, uh, like the, at the outside, on the outside integral? We put the bounds for X. So here you put like zero to one. And, what bounds um, do you put uh, on the in inside integral or the one on the interior? You right, you put like a bounce for y, so you put one to three. Sorry if this is getting ahead of it, uh, but are, it doesn't matter which order these right, integrals. Right. Exactly. It, like we will do it uh, in a second in the opposite order, but it will give okay. you the answer. But that's like the idea again, like that you can chop someone like this way. <laughs> or this way right like yes so it is like it that's why i showed you the two types of yellow slices right but like this is like like this is one of those things that it's just easier to explain but it then is super easy to do in practice you know but because like how point is that to do it in practice you just do like a single integral at a time Right, so this is for the vertical direction. Uh, uh, this is like the vertical chopping. Yeah, we're doing the vertical dissection, yes. Um, how do we know that this is a vertical dissection? Because Y is the vertical axis and that's the one that's going to be integrated first. So this is like, uh, let me write it here. So this is like the vertical cuts Right, we're doing vertical cuts since y is um, is going to appear first, right? It's going to be integrated first, so it's integrated first. And y, the y-axis is the vertical one, right? So that's why you call them vertical cuts. Are there any rules associated with this? So for instance, like chain rule, since we're there's two integrals involved, we're taking the first integral, then the outside integral, and then multiplying them, or how does that work? Oh, no, no, like you'll see, they're not really being multiplied. Uh, you, you'll see like- It's just one after the other, kind of like- it's more, it's more like one after the other. So like, think of this as partial integrals, right? So okay. when, if That's you thought of this- So this would be a mixed integral then? Uh, right, it is like the analog of like uh, partial with respect to X, then partial with respect to Y equals partial with respect to Y equals part, uh, and then partial with respect to X, right? Th like this is like the analog of, let me maybe, of, what we're about to show is like the, ver like the integral version of, of this, Thing, that it didn't matter in which order you took the derivatives, right? The hybrid derivatives. So, but if you think of this like as a partial integral, well, the whole point here is that like you're integrating first with respect to y because like it's like this parenthesis order. So only y is like a variable in this case, right? Like x is a fake variable. So when you integrate, you have to think of X as like a number like pi or three or seven or whatever, right? 
so um, let's try to do this. So like we're integrating with respect to Y, what do you think is the value? What would be the integral, like you're integrating then really Y squared with respect to Y? The exactly. It would be the function, right? Which partial derivative function? It would be like the integral of y squared dy. That's what I'm trying to find now. Uh, so it would just be 6xy. Uh, it would, well, it, well, it is like, uh, we're not doing anything different from like, if what I'm trying to, sorry, uh, but I'm trying to like, imagine if I could just ask you to find this, right? Uh, what would that be? That would have been y, y cubed over three, right? Yeah. So we're doing the same, like, let me write it here, like as an, as So it would just be x, y cubed. Uh, yes, right, exactly, yeah. Okay. Yes, good, good. So this becomes uh, x, y cubed. Correct, because like, then you just multiply by, is that making sense? Because like really the only variable was, um, y squared and the integral of y so squared wouldn't we add a y to the minus f uh yeah exactly the other one would be minus x times y is that what you meant wait yeah okay. because x is treated as a constant right right so because like the integral of one dy is y right uh so so like we did so like we did derivatives with respect to y or x or like partial derivatives. Now this is just partial integration. Correct, right, right, basically, yes. Okay. Right, right, right. Good, good. And then, uh, but this is like, this would be the answer if this were like an indefinite partial integral, but really in this class, like they're always definite. So you always like evaluate, right? So now we have to evaluate at y equals three and y equals one. So let me put it here. Is that making sense? Because it, like there were bounds in these problems, right? And so after we evaluate, you see, we will only get X, something that depends on X, and then we can just finish integrating that with respect to X. So let's put it like this. So we have something. Right, so what happens when you plug Y equals three in this example, you get, uh, yeah, it's like a double partial integral, correct? Uh, it's like a double partial definite integral because they're definite integrals, right? So it's like uh, y cubed is 27, right? So you get 27x minus 3x. And that's what you get when you plug in y equals three. And then you have to subtract the value at y equals one. So it's minus, what do you get at y equals one? You get um, x minus x, right? So those like that will can't like, uh, is that making sense? So this will cancel. And what you get, like you're going to integrate with respect to X. So really what you're doing is like doing the integral of 27 my X minus, 3x, uh, right, I mean, it, that's 24x, right? So really you're just integrating 24x with respect to x from zero to one. Sorry, can you explain where the uh, 27x minus 3x line came one, from? Yeah, was that from solving the, uh, evaluating the integral? Right, because it was a definite integral. Uh, so you just plug y equals three, in this expression, right? Okay, all right, yeah. Y equals, y, yeah, so it becomes um, <clears throat> 27, <throat> and then here you get like minus three X, yeah. Okay, thank you. Is that okay? Is that, is, are there good. any questions up to this point so far so good? So, right, like then you get 12 X squared, right? And that's 12, right? Is it, 
did that, is that okay questions up to this point it's like again it seems complicated but uh really it is not that bad because you're just doing like a single calculus one integral at a time right um but they're not uh it's just like you have it, it is like a it's like a factory process where you started like like think of this as a, as a process like where you started with the function 3xy squared minus minus x and you take it to the machine that integrates like the integrate machine with respect to y and that produces like a function of x which produced gave us like the function 24x and you pass it out through the uh the integrate with respect to x machine and then you get the number 12. Uh, well, it's not a derivative, it's an integral, right? Uh, so you mean like this, like uh, from here to here? Well, it, you're just like uh, 3x is just like a number. So it's like 3 pi. So what would be like the integral of 3 pi y squared? With respect to y that's like what you have to think about uh so imagine that you were just like if i had asked you what's the integral of three pi y squared dy um what that would be you know that yeah that would be pi y y cubed right it's the same that you see here it's just that um Is it okay? No, good. That seems better now. Okay. Uh, uh, good. Anyone else? Uh, I'll, I mean, once we start doing more complicated examples, things will be clear, cl clarified, but. Uh, and then like, but the point is that uh, you can do it in the opposite way. So you can do it with horizontal cuts or horizontal slices. So you can also do horizontal slices. So like in general, again, like the idea is like, if you had like, if you went back to our original triangle, right now we're going to integrate, correct. We're going to integrate first with respect to X. If you go back to the original triangle from A to B and then C to D, like a horizontal slice means that the slice is horizontal, right? So you draw something horizontal. So you draw something like this horizontal. And Wait, now can we have like triple integrals? Uh, yeah, like we'll do, correct. We will do triple integrals uh, soon enough. Uh, but it's the same principle, correct? Yes. Uh, you can do like you know you could have ten thousand variables and you can do like uh, one one like one I think mean, one hundred fold integrals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I don't know, I don't think there's like a name for that, but yeah, yeah. But it, it, it works at a. The good thing is like it sort of works always the same way so it's always like you're really just integrating one variable at a time so it's not too bad uh, but here like y is fixed and only x is changing right so the point is that like you could do the first like the integral with respect uh, like you can integrate the function first with respect to x and then uh, what values did the function take? It take from it was from A to B. Okay. And then this is like a, a horizontal area or whatever, like how you want to call it, right? It's like this is like the area of a uh, of a, of one of the slice in the opposite uh, of the slice of the horizontal slice, if you want. And then like, 
oh yeah 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 no this uh, is yes and then like you move uh, this horizontal area you sweep it out from c to d because those are like the values for y so this is sort of like a function of y and then when you integrate this fun um this area which depends on y you get the volume so or so the volume would be the integral of this area function with respect to y but remember y went from uh, c to d and so if you put everything together you realize oh we actually flipped the order of integration right so you get uh you get something like this, where now x goes from a to b, and y goes still from c to d. But you see now, if you compare it with what I wrote before, it's exactly like you know you reverse like uh, like you say you reverse the order of integration, right? Because now x is the one that we're going to do first, and I'm about to do this with the same example so that you see that we were we're still going to get twelve. Uh, that's what should happen, but you'll see that. Uh, how this is supposed to work. So far so good. So let's go back to the previous example. So remember that in this example, uh, the rectangle that I gave you, was um, this one, it was from one to three. And zero to one. So now we're just going to chop it up in this type of things, right? And the function that I had given you was three X Y squared minus X. And so, uh, what we're going to do now is again, you put like the, the function does not change, right? It's still three x y squared minus x, right? It is just that now we're putting x first, like as an integration variable. So you put x on the inside, the x on the inside, right? And that uh, in this particular case, uh, uh, well, the, 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 you flip the bounds. So now X goes from zero to one. So you put here zero, one. And what you get, uh, you do from one, uh, sorry, I should put, let me just to be consistent. Let me put, uh, use the pink color. And then what you get will go from one to three. One quick question. Is it because the X value remains like in like a constant boundary, whereas the Y value like changes in this? Uh, well, um, like what, uh, in this case, like um, in this case, right? Like uh, it, it, if you write it this way, you're, you, that means that you're going to integrate uh, first with respect to X, right? Uh, so that means that you have to put like the values that X takes on this region, uh, which is what I'm doing here. If you think of like drawing these like horizontal lines, they all go from a uh, value of X from zero. They all start at zero and they all end at one. So that's what I'm writing here, right? Um, mm -hmm. But then like what you will get after you do that integration will depend on Y, right? It will be like a function of Y similar to the previous situation. And so that uh, then you have to, uh, integrate like now it's like imagine like like what you put here are sort of like the bounds that take like that's these horizontal segments take so imagine that like imagine that this is like the horizontal segment and i'm telling you like the bounds for y are sort of like the bounds that these lines take so the lines start at y equals one and they end at y equals three so that's why you put these bounds for y here so like in the first step I don't know if you see my finger. In the first step, you're moving this way, right? Because only yes. X is changing. And in the second step, after you have moved on X, you're moving this way. And so now Y is the one that changes. Is, is that right? No, my question was- like, Oh, sorry. Is, okay, so you know, in the example, like you have a pink, two pink lines and two red lines, right? Uh, or the pink, right okay. there, right there. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Um, so for when we did the same thing previously, you put DX on the outside. So my question was, did you put DX inside because or is it related to the pink lines or is oh, it no, just no, 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 another no, no, no. way? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're related to the pink lines because the pink lines are now our horizontal lines, right? Okay, okay, that's all I wanted to know. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. so since the pink lines are horizontal Sorry. and X is a horizontal axis, that's how you uh, match the two, right? So here, uh, this is like, these pink lines are horizontal, right? So these are horizontal lines. And X is a horizontal, uh, it, 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 so they're parallel to the X axis, that's what I'm trying to say. Thus, parallel to the X axis. So if the pink lines were vertical, then you would have DY inside. Correct, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is what happened, okay. uh, let's see, which is sort of what I was doing here, right? Uh, okay. So you said, drew them vertically, they're parallel to the Y axis. And so the Y axis comes first, yeah. Or gets integrated. They first. should give you the same answer, right? They will, yeah. We'll see uh, right now that they do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Good, good. Yeah. So, but now, um, when you when you do this, like again, it's sort of like a partial integral, right? So you are going to integrate first with respect to x. That may be more easy because, like, you're more used to thinking about doing like an integral with respect to x, right? So, what do you get when you integrate? x with respect to x that's x squared over two right and everything else is like junk it's like a constant multiplying that so you get three y squared x squared over two is that making sense because like the the rest is like pi right it's like this is like integrating pi times x so it, it, you just copy the same constant and the only thing that matters is like the integral of x and then the other right well the other one is easy because you don't see a y here, but it's just minus x squared over two, right? Is that making sense so far so good? And again, this is a definitely integral. So really you have to, uh, we are going to evaluate here like the bounds where x equals one and where x equals zero. And then you get the y. I mean, and, I mean and, and then you just copy the y again. Is that okay? So far, so good. Any questions? And so again, you uh, you plug in the value of x. So when you plug in the value of x, you get three y squared, right? Times one half minus one half. That's what you get when you plug in x equals one. And then you have to subtract what you get when you plug x equals zero. But when you plug x equals zero, you get zero minus zero, right? Like there's nothing really happening here that's interesting. So really you're doing the integral of three y squared over two minus one half. We're just, sorry, oops, here should have been dy. And what is this integral? What's the integral of um, y squared? That's again, y cubed. So over three, so like they, this should be y cubed over two minus y over two. Is that okay? And what does this give you? y cubed that gives you um, 27 over two minus three over two minus one half minus one half. So that gives you 24 over two and that gives you 12. Uh, well, we're getting there. 
but you see, so 12 and what was before? 12, right? Uh, yeah, they will always be the same answer. So this is, um, again, like what this means is like, if you had started with this function, again, if you think of it as a, a machine process and you first take it to, to, of the process that integrates first with respect to X, that just the output is like a function of Y, which in this case was like uh, three Y squared over two minus one half. And then you, you pass it through the process that integrates with respect to Y. And then you got the number 12. So you start with two variables, you reduce the problem to one variable, and then you reduce the problem to zero variables. But zero variables is like a way, another way of saying a constant, right? That's why you end up with a number. So every integration sort of kills one of the variables, right? When each integral that you do drops the number by one of variables that remains. That looks like a very strange smiley. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, yes, I agree. Um, uh, but the fact that they always agree has like um, a name called Fubini's theorem. So Fubini's theorem says that uh, if you want like the term, like the actual name of the person, like. Uh, like what Fubini's theorem says is essentially that, that uh, if you do like an integral first, like with respect to Y, right? And integrated that from C to D and then from A to B with respect to X, that would have been the same as if you had um, done it like backwards, right? Like, or in the reverse order, so. Not that, I mean, so it's like just that you know that there's like some statement saying that it actually gives you the same answer. So you can flip the order of integration essentially. Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> there's a wind. <laughs> Good, now, uh, Right, let's try to increase the level. Like, so uh, actually like what you'll find like from these integral problems is that doing the integration is not the hard part, like, because you will always be integrating with respect to one variable at a time. What will be the difficult part sometimes is finding the correct bounds because like usually the, the, the region will not be a square. So let's try to do something that's not an integral over like a square. Let's try to do the next um, more complicated thing is like a, a triangle. So so what if we're not working with the, what if the, what if uh, we don't have a rectangle? Just so I can get a sense of where this is headed, will eventually these be like ellipses and uh, uh, yes, yeah, the most complicated thing are like, um, like, you know, discs or ellipses or things like that. And then okay. like, that's where, um, uh, things that you actually saw before, like polar coordinates and calc two for doing integrals, they will reappear here, but they sort of reappear like in a more uh, natural way, I think. So okay. thanks. Yeah. Yeah. So imagine that I give you like, uh, now I give you a triangle. Uh, 
uh, the equation of this hypotenuse is y equals 2x, just in case. Or well, the t is the name for this for this region. Okay, and um, let's say that the function that I give you is um, like just to do it su like super simple, so that you like the integral doesn't take forever. Let's just try to integrate the function x. It doesn't need so it doesn't need to depend on y in general. Like it could depend on y also, but it doesn't need to like it could also just have been like a function of y. Like that that won't really affect the the, the like much of what, what we are going to do now. So let's say that you wanted to find like the integral of x over this triangle. Okay. And, but we're going to apply the same philosophy, the chopping philosophy, like, so we're going to apply the same idea. So we're going to apply the slicing philosophy. So let's try to try to think about how you should do this. Kind of fun, like uh, you'll see. Uh, let's see. Let me draw it again. One, here's one, comma two, here's zero, here's y equals two x. So if we do vertical slices, right? Uh, this is how they are going to look like. Again, like the fact that they're vertical slices, right? What does that mean? Um, vertical slices are parallel, right, with respect to the y-axis. So you're going to integrate first with respect to the y-axis. Is that making sense with, uh, with everyone? So um, because these are parallel to the y-axis. Um, so professor, the f of x, y, the function will be given to us, right? Yeah, that, that's always given to you, correct. Okay. And like what we're about to do now is like the most critical part. Uh, it's like, this has nothing to do with the function whatsoever. This is just about the triangle itself. Okay, so now you have to right here in these boxes that I'm showing you right now, you have to write like the smallest and largest value that Y takes. Uh, but like there's a, a catch to it, right? Because like who can, like, is there like an obvious difference between these lines that I drew here, these vertical lines that I drew here or segments versus like, The vertical segments that I drew here. Can anyone see like a difference? Um, oh, here they're consistent in length. The, yeah, right, right, right. They sort of like enough. here, like all the segments have like the same length, right? Uh, but here, like you see, like here, the the lengths like start really, really small, and they they keep growing. Correct. So you cannot just put zero to one. Like let me. You cannot just put zero to one here because that would be saying like uh, that all the lengths are the same, right? So you have to be more careful with what you write. Um, well, the area, uh, yeah, okay. Someone said the right option. Like what you can say for sure is that like, uh, like where do all the segments start? They all start, you know, at, on the Y, on the X axis, right? They all begin, what's the initial point of every single segment? Is Y equals zero, correct? Is, is that making sense? Yeah. So they go to the curve, right? 
they they die at, on the curve, right? So this is the initial point. Where do they so end? The final one. Well, wouldn't they go from y equals zero to y equals two x? Correct. That's where they. Yeah. Um, because like um, the thing is that you cannot. I mean, it is true. That, like one is just that. Like it's where like this last segment ends, right? Oh, sorry. Oops. I did. Okay. One is where this last segment ends, but it's not where every vertical segment ends, right? Every vertical segment ends somewhere along the hypotenuse, right? Uh, so you have to write the equation of the hypotenuse here. So this is like the equation where the lines end, where the segments end. Okay. Is that making sense? Like this is like the most complicated part of all of the double integrals. Like really this is like the trick, like just to understand this part. So like in general, um, like the bounds that you have to put are like the initial, like the place where they all start and then the equation of the place where they all end. So do all of these integrals work on the assumption that uh, like every variable can be written in terms of the others? Uh, well, the curve, like... Um, for, for, and I, guess, I guess that's where parametrics come into play later. Right, right, right. So later, like, again, like we're increasing levels of difficulty, but for now, yeah, you can always write one of the variables in, in terms of the other. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. It, it, this, 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 uh, is this making sense? Like, and then... Um, I'll give you some, like on Monday, I'll give you some rules so that this becomes more clear. Uh, but for the remaining bounds, which are for X, uh, like for the exterior bounds, if you want to think about it, you just have to um, write like uh, where the vertical lines start and where the vertical lines end. So the vertical lines start at zero, right? This is where the vertical lines start. ends at one. Exactly, and they end at one, right. Uh, in fact, like the, like the point is, like, again, I will give you the rules uh, on Monday, but like the point is that this, like the exterior ones are always constants. So you can only put numbers here. The ones on the interior are allowed to be functions, essentially. So this is why it would, it's fine like that here, like you're writing like a function for the bounds. But here you can only write uh, constant values essentially. But so let's try to, but if uh, like the point is that if you somehow found the correct bounds, then like you're essentially good to go because now, now it's really back to the same type of integrals that we did uh, uh, previously. So if we have time uh, after this, could we go over like if we had an ellipse as an input? Well, we should do like the, uh, we'll do the ellipse once, uh, we actually need a lot more technology for the ellipse. I mean, okay. to do it nicely, if you don't okay. do it, yeah, yeah. So it, you need to do change of variables and other things. It is not uh, so easy as you may think, yeah. So like, no, this would be a rule for all shapes. I'll write the rules on Monday. I will just try to finish this example in the remaining six minutes. But yeah, I'll give you the general general rules on, on Monday. So what's the integral of x with respect to y? Remember, this is like with respect to y. So x is a constant. So what's the integral of x with respect to y? Uh, y Sorry. times x. Yeah, yeah, x times y. Good, good. And then you plug y equals zero here. And then you plug y equals two x. And so you're integrating from zero to one. Uh, well, you plug y equals two x, so you get two x squared minus zero dx, right? And this is two um, x cubed, right? Over three, correct. And this is two thirds. Is that making sense? So that's the answer here. 
So far, is that okay? So far, so good. So you see, like the integral itself was not that bad once you found the correct bounds. Like the point here is always to find the right bounds. Oh, it was called Fubini. Oh, I can write it on the chat. Um, I mean, that was the name of the mathematician. It was an Italian, so. Is, is this okay so far so good? So let's try to do the horizontal slices just so that we have both for written down for today. Inside integral starting from zero to one and the function would be two X DX. Well, you, uh, one needs to be a bit careful. Like it's kind of, yes and no, yes. Kind of, look, let me, so now we're doing horizontal slices, right? Uh, so this is parallel to the X axis. So like since it's parallel to the x axis, the, the integral that goes first, right, is dx, that's good. We're integrating x as a, as a function, right? And here we're going to put the y. Now, uh, where do, now where do the, hor like, where do the horizontal lines or segments start? They will start at the hypotenuse, right? Uh, so you, you should put it as a lower, uh, uh, why do I know that they started the, as a hypotenuse? Because you are sort of moving like along the, towards the positive values of, of X, right? So, so here, like the initial points now are like on the hypotenuse. And it's true that the equation of the hypotenuse is two X, right? But now you're sort of reversing the roles because now you're thinking of X as a function of Y. So you have to write it as X equals y over two, the bound. So you have to flip the role. That's what I'm trying to say. Is, is that making sense? It's the same equation. It's just like you're think, changing your mind on what depends on what. Because you, you're integrating with respect to x, so you have to give the bounds for x, right? So x is the one that is, needs to be determined in terms of other data. And where do the all the lines end? They all end on this um, side of the triangle. What's the equation of this side of the triangle? One. X equals one, right? And then like, uh, it's sort of similar to what we did before. You have to put uh, here as a lower bound where the equation where all the horizontal lines start, the horizontal lines start were at the X axis, which is Y equals zero, right? And the uh, horizontal lines, they keep shrinking, shrinking, shrinking until re they reach this vertex. So that's um, uh, y equals two, right? Because uh, this is the value two for. Is that okay? Is that making sense with everyone? And if you need to leave, uh, feel free to leave, but I, I'll just need two more minutes so you can watch the remaining two minutes on the recording. But like, yeah, now this is like an integral with respect to X. So this is X squared over two, uh, evaluated at X equals one, and then equals X equals Y over two. And what we get, we're going to integrate from zero to two. So we're doing the integral from zero to two of what? Of um, one half minus uh, y squared over four, right? And that gives you y over two minus y cubed over, sorry. Isn't the x squared, so wouldn't you square 
y over two and then divided by two also. Uh, oh, you mean that it should be four eight, right? Yeah. yeah. Good, 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 good. Excellent. Good catch. Um, so, right, excellent. Good. And then, so what did I do here now? And then this becomes y cubed over 24, right? When you integrate it. Because, yeah. In fact, if you're not, not given the same answer, you would know that we did, some, I did something wrong. But so when you plug in y equals two, you get uh, two over two minus, what is the other one? Eight over 24 minus, well, the other one is zero minus zero. I mean, doesn't matter. So you get one minus one third, and that's two thirds. And what, is that the same that we found before? It is, right? Sorry, just to go up first. Two thirds. Okay, uh, so yeah, next time I'll write for you the general rules, like there's some uh, things that you can look for to know if you set them up correctly. And, but yeah, you see like how this is growing in difficulty, these examples. So next time we'll do curves, like things that are a bit more complicated than triangles, but still sort of manageable. So I'll see you on Monday then. Um, I'd make this. I think you have a good one today. It was very interesting. Oh, good, good. This good, this good topic. Yeah. It's the most visual topic of the course for sure, because, like, you'll see.